Hello, my lovable friends. I hope everything is going great on your side. In today's class, we're going to learn something very cool about the other uh, kind of uh, you know essay types that you might see while being prepared for the day of examination or on the day of test. So anyway and anyhow, you have to know about all the types in order to be fully prepared for the test in order to show uh, your fullest potentials and strengths. Okay, so advantages and disadvantages essay. I'm sure that uh, you've seen them on different kinds of you know questions or you know, different kinds of model answers and stuff like this. So let's get into these type of questions to see how we can develop and structure our own essay when it comes to advantages and disadvantages essay. So before getting started, let's subscribe to the channel together and smash that like button in order to support what actually we are doing on IELTS study. So let's see, you might also see a question in the exam that asks you to discuss the advantages or disadvantages of a topic. For example, people in the community can buy cheaper products nowadays. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? Or new technologies have changed the way children spend their free time. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? And the last example that has been uh, chosen to be discussed here is in many countries nowadays, young single people no longer stay with their parents until they are married, but leave to study or work somewhere else. Do you think uh, this trend has more advantages or disadvantages? So in all the following questions that I read, uh, you can see that we are talking about advantages and disadvantages, whether the advantages are far more or the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. So let's see how we can develop our ideas and our essay with regards to advantages and disadvantages kind of essay. So take a look. The structure would be like this. The introduction, okay, you have to introduce the topic that makes sense. Say oh, what the discussion is about. For example, what the two different sides believe. Advantages and disadvantages. Okay, guys. So when we want to structure our advantage and disadvantage essay, we would go like that. Of course, you need to have an introduction in order to introduce the discussion. You can go for the different sides that you believe. You know, advantages and disadvantages. The body paragraphs, actually, we've got two body paragraphs, of course, and you've got uh, body paragraph one that includes two or three advantages, uh, a topic sentence to say what the paragraph is about, argument one, I mean, advantage one, evidence one, argument two, evidence two, and the list goes on. Uh, based on the kind of arguments that you would like to go for. But of course, we wouldn't uh, recommend having a lot of, uh, you know, arguments because that way you cannot uh, fully support each of them and that is not something that we are looking for. We need well-developed ideas and arguments. So, let's talk about body paragraph 2, which includes two or three disadvantages. As I already mentioned, I wouldn't agree on giving three disadvantages because that is a little bit too much. So instead, go for two disadvantages and support them in a much better way. So you would go for a topic sentence to say what exactly this body paragraph is going to talk about. Then you start giving that kind of argument relates to the disadvantage that you've chosen and you're supposed to give that kind of evidence to support your idea. And then, as far as you're done with the first disadvantage, you would start the cycle for the second disadvantage. And then you will support it as best as you possibly could. And the last part, of course, is your conclusion. Summarize key arguments, paraphrasing them. Your conclusion should contain no new information. That is very important. Because it uh, depends on your kind of, you know, essay, uh, you can see that a lot of candidates would go for some new topics. They want to just make it a little bit much more unique and special, and they make a mistake and they fall for the trap. So your conclusion, remember, 
does not need to have new ideas. Actually, it shouldn't, because of the fact that that is a kind of conclusion. You are not, uh, you know, introducing the topic. It is the end of your work. You shouldn't introduce a new topic. So, if you think logically, you will definitely relate to what I'm talking about. We have a note here. Let's see what exactly we are talking about. Arguments are introduced by using impersonal opinions. Evidence can include example, explanation, facts, or consequences. When giving evidence, it is often helpful to start general, then go more specific. So as you see, there are different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, differences when it comes to giving arguments and evidence, because you should be fully familiar with their differences in order to be a successful writer in IELTS. So when it comes to giving arguments, they are introduced by using impersonal opinions. It is suggested. Many people believe that, huh? So it is like that. But evidence can include examples, explanation, facts, or consequences. You can also actually start with a general statement and then go for a more narrow one example. That's it. Okay, guys, so let's read a model answer together in order to understand what exactly we mean by those kind of fancy words. So international travel has many advantages to both travelers and country that they visited. Do advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So let's see what uh, we are given here. It is true that the growth of the international travel industry has brought many benefits to both travelers and the host nations, which receive them. While there are serious negative consequences of this development, I would argue that they are outweighed by the advantages. So you can see here we are dealing with a rather thesis-led essay type because your opinion is asked. You should make a decision whether the advantages can outweigh the disadvantages or not. So you need your own decision and idea. So let's move on and talk about the first body paragraph. Okay, guys. So the first body paragraph, on the one hand, there are some aspects of international travel. Principally, the tourist trade, which raises a cause for concern. In terms of the tourists themselves, they often arrive at an overseas destination, only to find that the prices of everything are grossly inflated. They may be overcharged for everything from a taxi, a meal, in a restaurant, or buying a souvenir. In terms of the host country, the problems of waste disposal, pollution, and unregulated construction of hotels and tourist attraction often result in permanent damage to the environment. Many beach resorts in Thailand and Malaysia, for example, have become concrete jungles of high-rise hotels and apartments to accommodate mass tourism from Europe. Okay, cool. So, as you see here, we have focused on the disadvantages that this trend has brought to uh, the planet Earth and, of course, humanity. Let's move on and talk about the next part, which starts with, on the other hand, signaling the reader that we are going to read about the other side of the coin as well. Because, as you know, everything has got two sides. On the other hand, despite such grave issues, grave is a nice synonym for adverse or bad. They are not insurmountable and must be considered again the advantages of the growing international travel industry. Beautiful. Insurmountable. So it means that they can be resolved. They are not insurmountable. Firstly, there is ever greater competition among tour operators to provide value for money holidays so that holiday makers, excellent holiday makers, can enjoy their experience of a foreign country and culture to the full. So we can enjoy something or the experience of something to the full. Beautiful expression, huh? Or holiday makers, instead of travelers or tourists all the time, you can go for 
holiday makers, which shows your huge and vast knowledge in vocabulary and phrases related to the topic. Secondly, the influx of foreign tourists brings money to the host country through the provision of jobs and services for the developing hotel and construction industries. Employees in these sectors generally benefit from higher wages and improved living standards. Beautiful body paragraph 2 focuses on uh, the advantages related to tourism and the question exactly. And the last part that we're supposed to cover, of course, in order to get a high BAM score in our task achievement is writing your conclusion. In conclusion, I believe that the advantages of international travel for both travelers and host countries are greater than the drawbacks. Serious though, these are excellent. So here we are just repeating what exactly we have already mentioned in our introduction. That is great. And as you see, I believe that has been used because your idea really matters in these types of questions and you have to express your opinion. What do you think? What's your opinion? It has to be mentioned throughout the whole essay in order to give you the score of seven and higher. So great. And the other point that I would like to tell you about is about two sides. I mean, you know, not only the host country is important to be discussed and examined, but, but also travelers are important as well. So if you fail to address one of these sides, you are not going to get a high band score because both of these elements have to be evaluated in order to give you a high and nice band score in your TA, which stands for Task Achievement. Okay, guys, thank you for having me here again today. I would like to ask you to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. And of course, I would be so grateful to read your comments and having you actually as the community supporting me. And I would like to uh, say goodbye to you for now. But I will come back with another type of essay that you should definitely be familiar with in order to enhance your score in IELTS writing. Thank you guys and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.